YouTube, it's your boy Fishing Ken Hook City TV, and I'm back with another one. I got my partner with me today. Give me that camera. <laughs> he holding the camera for right now. Cowboy Roy. Cowboy now. Roy, man. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Listen, today we got something specific we want to talk about. I know a lot of people's been asking. I've been granted permission to drop brush piles. And today, man, we're going to let y'all see how Fishing Ken creates habitat that he can go back to to slam these donkeys. Let's go, baby. Right, guys so if y'all remember the last time we were out here which was the last video y'all probably saw from hook city tv we came out here to this private pond and one thing we noticed right off the bat is number one it was really really shallow the second thing we noticed is that there was no cover there was no brush um anywhere i think we found one stick up um but what i did notice is there was some big schools of crappie guys big schools of crappie and if you noticed they came right under the boat when we got close to them. So that lets me know that they are dying for some type of structure, some type of cover, something to make them feel comfortable. So as you see, your boy, with my man Roy, we went out and got a few of these crepe myrtles, man. And we're gonna use these to create these fish some habitat. And I believe it's gonna go down. So we're gonna show y'all how we do that. Um, everything is in the boat. We got everything we need. Guys, real quick, I listed. We needed a drill. Um, we had a pole saw, it's what we cut these with. We're gonna be using zip ties, and then we're gonna put bottles on the top uh, to make sure this thing floats. Um, and we were also asked to create a few community holes, um, some things that can be uh, either visible or something that we can mark. So we have a pool noodle for that, and we'll let that float above probably two or three of these brush piles so that the community, community can find out where they are. So using using my uh, my down imaging and my side imaging, what I've done is located what I found to be the deepest part of this lake and that's seven and eight foot. I haven't found the eight foot. Today it's showing at seven and a half. So we might have a little drop in the water, but right here in this area, what I found is seven foot of water, the deepest part of this whole place. What I've done is I took my buoy marker you can see it out there. What I did was I, I uh, threw a buoy marker out on where I wanted this brush pile to be. So that's where that first brush pile is gonna go. We're gonna go ahead and prep our stuff, drop my trolling motor spot lock, and when I'm ready to drop it, I'm gonna drop it right here beside this buoy marker. So what we're gonna do uh, to prep these, we're gonna drill a hole through the bottom ends of these two pieces of wood that we're gonna use. And that what that's gonna do, it's gonna give us an anchor point to put our zip ties through. Two holes drilled. I got these heavy duty zip ties we found at Home Depot. Just to give y'all a quick idea of what's gonna go on, we're just gonna run these zip ties through the um, wood. The holes have been drilled. I'm actually putting two together because these are two um, that we we uh, we found laying on the ground. They're dead, so they should float um, for a little while until they get waterlogged. But Anytime you drop a brush pile or um, a piece of structure that you want to actually stand up, what you need is some buoyancy. So what we're gonna use, since we forgot our gallon jugs at home, we're gonna be using this Gatorade bottle. And what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll take another zip tie with the cap on. It has to have air trapped on the inside. We're gonna, we're gonna tie it to one of the upper limbs. And what that's gonna do is help give it some more buoyancy so that it'll stand up over time, not just right now. So we'll get that put on. And then next we're gonna um, add one of our bricks. It ain't gonna take much to sink this little stuff right here. And uh, we got structure in the water. Check it out. All right guys, so this is what I was talking about here in the upper arm. We'll put it about right here, which is the top half. And I'm just gonna zip tie this um, to the tree as well. Simple and easy. Listen, if you can, use a gallon jug. It's just, it's 
some more aerial, trap some more air. Make sure that it's tight. And that's it, that's in there. So one thing we gotta remember when we drop this in here, don't be fishing for the Gatorade bottle because of the air, the uh, electronics will pick it up as something hard. It'll give us a hard return on that, but that is not gonna be a fish. That is our bottle. And that's one mistake people make when they fish uh, other people's structures. If they put anything in it to help it to stand up, they'll start fishing for that stuff and it ain't a fish. You heard it here first. I told you, every time you watch Hook City TV, get your notepad out, man. I'm not going to be on here just dumping a bunch of mess on y'all. I'm going to make sure we get educated. Hook City TV, y'all know what time it is. We're going to keep it informative and entertaining. Let's go. So we got everything we talked about. My boy Cowboy Roy, what you say <laughs> with the fresh stents? And y'all shout me out, man. Comment section, do my boy look fresh or what, yeah, man? Listen. I'm gonna make it do what it do, Hook City style, baby. Let's go, baby. All right, so what we did, we got our uh, we got our cinder block here, and we have the heavy duty. Make sure they're heavy duty, guys. Otherwise, a lot of times when you're dropping them in the lake in your body of water, these babies will break because these edges are not smooth. Go ahead and uh, get that together on there. And guys, this is some. This wood should be okay. We want to make sure it's tight. We don't want it moving around on us listen that's it right there that's it right there now i don't know how much it's gonna stand up the way we just put it on there <laughs> oh, the mug but, gonna lay right down that mug gonna lay right down but, but it should be off the bottom switch it up just a little bit we're gonna lay it over like that tight as you can get it. bingo not too crazy all right now all we got left to do man is to uh, motor over to this point. We can actually drop it where we are, but we'll motor over to this point where we, where we made our mark. That way we know it's gonna be right on the drop off. And sink, baby, sink. It's actually gonna stand up out of the water because we're not dealing with anything real tall unless it lays down. If it lays down, that's cool too. All right, guys, again, this is light. If need be, we can come back and cut these limbs. We can come back and cut those limbs if we don't want it to show. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This one, guys, we're gonna lay down. So what D's doing now, he's gonna, he's gonna drill through the middle of this one and put our zip tie there so that we ensure that it lays down. And that means the, the, the weight, the weight will be in the center so it won't stand up on us, it'll lay flat. Uh, where we're gonna put this is in one of the community spots. So it'll be um, laying down in shallower water. Yeah, make sure that thing tight so it don't do no more extra moving. Yep. So guys, this is one that's gonna lay flat. It's gonna be a community hole. And again, we pray that it's big enough to where it'll do what it needs to do. Roy, when we start approaching this buoy marker, let me see if I can. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And then make sure everything clears. All right. We were coming to the dam. That's how some. Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, a decoy. Oh, it's a Man, that decoy way down there. Bro, this decoy scared the life out of me. <laughs> Duck decoy, y'all. That decoy was way at the other end. Duck the decoy. Field. I was like, wait a minute. What is that? Wow. I don't know. I ain't even all the way off. Dang it. We ain't got no hatchet or nothing. Well, we Boy. This one would be good too, just to lay down. 
I mean, oh, you, you start talking about just a different branch? Yeah, just a different branch. So I'm living over here. I don't know what's in there. I don't want to find out either. <clears throat> Good bedding spot. It's actually a good hunting spot. Yeah. You sit your stool right there. Uh huh. The wind, this perfect wind. Wind blowing to the water. All the deer and pigs come down from this way. Yep. Ambush spot right here. Waiting on it. Waiting with on your it. bow. That's it. Or with your buck knife. No, no, no. You know what? <laughs> Sometimes I use a fork and spoon. Uh huh. And soon they walk by, I just, <laughs> you just go. <laughs> you just two times. <laughs> Two times to the hams. Shake them real quick. Two times to the hams. Yeah. So, yeah, man. Perfect. Man. I hate we ain't got this off. Even if we cut it from here, bro, that's a yeah, lot August. of. Mm -hmm. And the way it lays, if it lays down like this, they'll get under this part mm -hmm. and they'll get all in this. Mm -hmm. Problem is, this is a hang up area. So, we'll probably clean that up a little bit. Just these little nothing branches. Yeah. A lot of these little nothing branches. Mm -hmm. We'll trim those back, trim these back, and leave these main. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they can still yeah, get in there. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Oh man. Yeah. Guys, we're coming up with ideas out here. Comment section, if y'all have any ideas for us, we don't know at all and I'm not gonna sit here and act like I do, um, but I, I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. But uh, structure, we're trying to put it in the lake to make crappy great. Let's go, baby. Little swampy. Hey, you better take your time. Take your time on that climb. <clears throat> Alright guys. So yeah, we we beached the boat. We're gonna get me in here. You got a hanger on her. Get you. Ain't no ain't no free loading on me. There you go, fishing Ken. <laughs> big, boy, big boy, get in there. <laughs> big boy, get in there. Oh, so man. guys, we're gonna leave this this time. We're gonna go ahead and finish doing what we gotta do here. Hope y'all understood the concept of everything that's going on, man. It's short, sweet, and simple. Um, you don't need a whole lot of tools. Some people use um, sandbags instead of bricks. Um, but you need something that's going to weigh them down. Guys, listen to me. Disclaimer. Check with your local uh, game wardens um, and make sure before you go out and drop brush that it is lawful and legal for you to do so. Fish and Ken ain't telling you to just run around all these spots dropping brush everywhere make sure it's lawful and legal if so be responsible man don't just drop any old junk down there um keep it clean because these are our waterways last but not least man enjoy fishing that's what all this hard work is for man to enjoy the fishing so that you ain't got to be running around talking about oh somebody's on my spot create spots if you're allowed to that's what this is about being able to create areas to fish. And I'm not gonna put them all in 15 foot of water or all in 22 foot of water. Different seasons means that the fish are gonna be in different places. Therefore, you need to put your brush in different places for those reasons. Also, here in Texas, we get a south wind. Up in North Texas, we always get a south wind. Seems like the wind's always blowing out of the south. So I wanna drop those brush piles where it's south wind protected. You want north wind protected too, but for me, the majority of the time, I check the weather all the time. Um, shucks, five times, six times a week. I check it every day sometimes, even when I had to go to work. Um, but check the weather, kind of get an understanding of, of what your wind direction usually is. And once you figure that out, then you can start placing, placing stuff in areas that will protect you from the wind. That's real important, man. It's your boy Fishing King Hook City TV. Hope y'all enjoy, man. Comment section, let me know what you think about this video, what we could have did differently. Um, again, I'm real excited. Uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna um, come back. We're gonna fish these spots real soon, man. I got a feeling it's gonna be donkey time in a couple days. It's your boy Fishing King Hook City TV. I'm gone. Oh, wait, wait. He's swimming at the boat. He's swimming at the boat. What is it? Oh my God, that's gotta be a bass. What in the hoot did I just shoot? Boy, is a pig's feet pork? That's a bass. It got to be, bro. Wait, it's mud. If it ain't.
It'll get tired in a minute. Listen, y'all, when you get when you get a hold of something, you ain't got a housing, he gonna get tired in a minute. One thing about it, everything get tired. Daddy said a fast horse can run fast, but can't he run long? Look here, you gotta watch the line. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, cause he finna get in the motor. Did, did you see him? Okay. He get tired in a minute. He get tired of fighting in a minute. Don't you throw that hook. I gotta show you the Tim. Don't you throw that hook. Don't you throw that hook. Yeah, he down there. He down there eating them little crabbies. Say somebody. Ooh. Yaga. Yaga. Yaga down. Uh-uh-uh. Don't you, don't you act like that. I got to take a picture of your little ugly self, then we going home. Send it to Tim. Told him I caught him on the, on the whim. That work. We're going to get a release. We're going to get a release at you. I ought to cook you. That's a catch, clean, and cook right there. But I know. That's okay. We're going to let you go.